You can remember during the war securing a short pass to get to then Saigon and coming up from the Delta where we were stationed and sitting on the top of the Rex Hotel in a momentary pause from all of the craziness. And I was looking out at the city at night, uh, watching these flares popping all around the city, everywhere, and in the distance, hearing bursts of gunfire and the occasional roar of a C-130 flying by, and occasionally the burp of what we call Puff the Magic Dragon. It was surreal, an oasis of sorts, but still the very essence of a war zone. You go back there today, which I have done, same hotel, same rooftop, but completely different view, a completely different nation. The traffic circle outside the Rex is filled with motorbikes, teeming with passengers in every form of commerce, from chicken coops to air conditioners to computer monitors to smartphones. Nobody's thinking about the war. In fact, most people, the majority in Vietnam, are too young to even remember it. It's a different era, and that calls for a wholly different relationship. No one back in 1968, I can tell you, could have possibly imagined General Secretary Chum's visit to Washington last year, or President Obama's planned visit to Vietnam next month, which I look forward to joining him in. No one could have imagined the broad bilateral agenda that we have developed, including education, climate change, science, health, high tech, the internet, and military to military cooperation. And no one could have imagined the United States and Vietnam joining with 10 other nations to achieve a priceless opportunity on trade. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement represents nearly 40% of the entire world's GDP. And it will create jobs, enhance the environment, improve working conditions, and strengthen commercial ties from Hanoi to Tokyo to Santiago to Washington. 